Welcome to the Confessions of a Group X Instructor Podcast. For group exercise junkies and enthusiastic classgoers, we'll explore and uncover authentic, thought-provoking, and heartwarming industry education and inspiration from entertaining, badass fitness pros. And now your host, creator of Warrior Rhythm, Warrior Strength, Warrior Combat, Warrior Revolution, and Warrior Kids Group Fitness Brands, Ellen DeWord. Here we grow. Welcome, everybody, to Confessions of a Group X Instructor podcast. Today, I have Mariah with us. She is not only a group fin- fitness manager in San Diego, California, overseeing five, I think, different Choose Fitness locations, but she's also a warrior master trainer, so someone that I get to work very closely with. And in fact, we just got back from being at IDEA together at the IDEA World Convention, so we're pretty much high on life right now, buzzing with post-conference vibes and endorphins and all that good stuff. So Mariah, thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. This is a podcast that I make sure not to miss every week and also a great resource that I send out to my team a lot of weeks. So to be here and be on with you is an honor. Yes, that's right. You have. You've told me quite a few times, like I sent this one to my team. That's right. It's so much better than just sending emails that nobody looks at anyway. This is a way more fun way to get the information out. Plus, sometimes it's nice to hear something from someone else that isn't you. It's kind of like being a parent. Like, it's kind of nice to hear something from the person that isn't like your parent. (laughs) Like, they don't... They don't know me. I can tell them how to send an, a professional email. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but we are going to be talking to you, the audience, you, the amazing audience. We're going to be talking to you today about being a group fitness manager. And we're going to kind of dive into Mariah's story, like how she got there, how she got into fitness quickly. And then we're going to like unearth and unveil and really talk about the nitty gritty of group fitness management. Um, it's an awesome opportunity Um, but we also don't want to be Pollyannish about it. Like it is work, work and, um, fulfilling work. And, um, we both have, we both have lived that life. She's still living that life. I just recently resigned from, from that, but we're going to both probably share, um, some tips, some tricks. Maybe you already are a manager. Um, maybe you aspire to be one, but we plan on bringing you some big value today. So Mariah, why don't you tell us like quickly how you got into group fitness and then we'll dive in when you're ready. Yes, I love it. And it's so crazy that we are filming this today because I just sent you a memory popped up in my Facebook that six years ago today, I accepted the position of assistant district manager at the time. So it's meant to be today. (laughs) Yes, actually, wait, I want to hear a little bit more about that text. Wait, hold on. I'm going to look at my phone right now, everybody, because I was she did text me that and I was, um, literally walking in to teach a class, you know, so I couldn't do like the full um, read. But yeah, that is crazy that this is your six year anniversary. Yes, today. Oh, that's so, so cool. very exciting. And I can share a little bit. It's obviously been a life journey to get into fitness. And so I don't want to bore everybody with a lot of detail. But I was trying to make this really long life journey story short. And um, I will try my best because my path to fitness wasn't as straightforward as maybe some people have. I do feel like I am not in the total minority of people that don't realize their passions and their potential until later in their career or life. But I, growing up, was never really a gym goer. My family didn't have a lot of extra money. And I'm also from the South in the U.S. So um, it's not a huge priority like it is here in San Diego. And so we just never, we were fit. We were athletic. I actually did my first bike ride of 100 miles when I was like 12 with my dad. So (laughs) we did do that, but we didn't necessarily always um, participate in any group fitness classes. So I I swam, I I danced, I did all the things, but never really went into a gym except my high school one, which was, you know, questionable. (laughs) Um, And then I went to college and I thought I needed, air quotes, a professional job, right? Like fitness and athleticism were just a, a side thing that I did, but I needed to go to college and get a degree. So 
I started out in business. I ended up loving uh, sign language. So I became a sign language interpreter. I double majored in two different universities so that I can make that happen. So I have a communications degree and then sign language. I loved interpreting and I can touch on a little bit how cool it all relates eventually to what I do now, but the variety of the job as an interpreter was so cool. I mean, if I had lived in Orlando and stayed there, I would have been an interpreter forever because I worked in theme parks and um, concerts and shows and cruise lines. And the performance element was what I really liked, which is what kind of ties into now. But also hospitals and I've birthed babies and I've just gotten to experience a lot of things with a lot of people. I loved it. Then I married my high school sweetheart and he was doing a PhD program at the University of Georgia. So we moved there. Very rural. Uh, I worked in a high school with one deaf student and it's like going through high school all over again. It's really not <laughs> that fun. I quickly fell out of love with interpreting, even though I started to work at technical colleges and the University of Georgia. I went back and got my master's degree in sign language interpreting, kind of as an experiment to see if I would fall in love with it again. It was a very expensive experiment that did not necessarily. It's <laughs> like getting married to someone to see if you could maybe fall in love with them. Okay, carry on. <laughs> yes. Uh, it did not it did not work out so well, but I have a master's, which is cool, and I could always rely on that in the future if I need to. I then was moved to Penn State for my husband's postdoc, which if you don't ha marry a scientist, you would never know that postdocs are a thing. But after they do six years of PhD program, there's more. There's more school. So we did one and a half winters in Penn State. And all of this time, I'm starting to teach some fitness classes. So I should back up a little bit. In Georgia, I was training for a bike ride with my dad and he had done several of what we call the cross Florida. It's a 170 mile bike ride. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Um, he's done so many of them. It was on my bucket list since I was little to do, mm -hmm. but in Georgia, it's cold in the winter. So I walked into my first cycle studio Okay. And that's how fitness started for me. I signed up for a free trial. I wanted to make the most of my free trial because I, again, I'm still cheap. I'm thinking gym memberships are an extra expense. We're, we're in grad school. We don't have any money, but I signed up for this free trial and I took like three classes a night. And by the end of the week, the cycle instructor was like, you ride a lot. Like yeah. <laughs> you can do this if you want to yeah. get paid to do this. And I was like, wait, I could get a fitness membership. Free and yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of where group fitness started for me. I started in cycle in a small certification that no one would accept anywhere <laughs> except the YMCA that I started at. And then very quickly realized I needed to get certified. So I have my ACE group fitness and my ACE personal training. I found a, a credible mentor at the YMCA and he kind of guided me through the process, but then we had to uproot and move to Pennsylvania. So I kind of started that whole process of networking again and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I worked at Penn State with a professor that was amazing. But and and then also in some gyms, which might tie into my confession later. Hmm. But <laughs> well, I worked. You haven't nailed one down yet. This is exciting. Okay. I have two, and I don't know which one to pick. Well, you might just do, do both. We'll see. Anything can happen. Okay. Okay. I love it. So after one and a half winters at Penn State, I told my husband I loved him very much. If he wanted to join me, he could. But I was leaving. <laughs> This Florida girl cannot do cold. Yes. So we landed on San Diego. And during the time in Pennsylvania, I had um, met an incredible master trainer through Beachbody. And um, so she connected me with the master trainer that was in San Diego. And we'll talk about more in my tips about networking. But that is crucial. Yeah. She helped me up with the management here. And I was like, if we're going to go into fitness full time. This is where this, this is the city, right? It's like fitness Mecca almost, you know, like, yeah. so 
I started teaching as much as possible. I did a few interpreting jobs, but not really all that much. Mm-hmm. I was teaching everywhere, driving hours doing all the things that I could to try to make ends meet and enjoy teaching. I think I was up to like 25 classes or so a week and very quickly realized that I needed to figure out a way to make fitness, make me some income without also just destroying my body all the time. So it, it was really cool how it happened. Fitness management jobs are kind of few and far between, right? There's not, a ton of us and and it just happened that when i was doing actually a bio uh audition with the master trainer here at choose Mm -hmm. the then district manager my boss now regional director summer was hiring me and doing the audition and she's like we're actually interviewing for an assistant district manager too would you like to apply for that and it just worked out wow Shout out to Summer because we just saw her yes. in LA. Yes. She loved our warrior strength. So much fun. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you got into it. That's all right. So let's like dive in. And I, I do, you're right. It's not, there's, it, there's not a ton of jobs available. And I think it's tends to be a job that people keep for a long time. So there's not, I don't think it's like a high turnover job. And so if you're looking for something like Mariah said, you want to make an an income and a living in fitness. I mean, first of all, I just want to say you can make a living in fitness. You have to put different hats on your head to do that. Um, or I guess be a celebrity (laughs) or I guess be a celebrity. Then you just have the one hat will do, but, um, (laughs) You can do it. And I think being a group fitness manager is a great hat. It's a great way. It's a great vehicle to be able to work in, in fitness. So, um, yeah, it was an similar, like for me, my first group X coordinator job was teeny tiny. So there, it looks different depending on your studio, studios, club, corporation, like there's, it doesn't, even Mariah's experience and the way I will weigh in isn't, it's not universal. It's almost like little fingerprints. They're all different. If I would, in fact, I will interview other group fitness directors and managers. And Mariah and I were just talking before we started to record about how like even the terms director and manager are used differently depending on the organization or whatever. So, um, but and honestly, even within our company, from the six years that I've been here, we had a district group exercise manager, and then we had kind of a separate team training department. And about two years ago, now we converged those, and my title changed from district group ex manager to district fitness manager. So all of those terms in each, even within our company, have changed a lot over the years. Yes. My, my first group fitness management position, I was just going to say, and I'm not going to talk much about this at all because I have mentioned it on an earlier episode. It was just little bitty. It was little hours, little pay, little bitty. And it did morph into bigger, 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 um, bigger, 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 bigger. It did morph into an, an enormous role. So, um, but we're not here to talk about me. Okay. So I would love for you just, I don't know, like, what are some of the fav- what are some of your favorite things about it. And do you want to share with us, like, how many clubs, how many instructors, how many classes a week? Like, what does your job look like? Do you have an office? Do you not have an office? Do you have a computer? Do you, like, what does your management role look like? Because again, it's different. I love that. It is very different for everyone. Um, I oversee five clubs. And within those five clubs, I have three now fitness managers that are under me, also supervising the instructor team. And then I've got anywhere between like 85 and 100 instructors and coaches within those five different clubs that we are teaming together to coordinate. I do not have an office. Mm -hmm. I am currently in our team training studio. And on your phone, (laughs) mind you, on your, she's on your, and also I don't know, but like I've gotten two phone calls. Let me just put this, lock it down. Okay, I got two phone calls that broke through. I don't know if it, uh, hopefully we're good audio wise. People, don't, been- call, don't call me right now. I'm podcasting. Right. 
<laughs> they should know. Um, yeah, Mariah is in. So is that your team training or your group X? This is our team training studio. It's our group exercise room. We do keep open during the day for, for members to come in when we're not in class sessions. Our team training, we do keep it locked down because of all the technology and things in here and no one else is in here. So um, I was able to come in near this room. I take over some offices from our GMs or things when we're here when we need to, but mostly I just float in and out and run around with my head cut off most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So do you want, like, what are some of your favorite parts of the job? What do you love about it? I, I think... Part of what I drew me to interpreting and then to fitness was one, the performance element. We talked about in our conference this weekend, kind of what makes you, you, and that has definitely been a theme throughout my life, but also the variability. My husband is amazing, but he goes to the same lab and does the same like room every single day. And I just, I couldn't do that. I love that. I have no idea what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't know where I'll be. The traffic is a little hard to deal with sometimes, especially in San Diego. But I love the fact that I get to just be around different people in different situations and problem solve. So that's definitely one of the favorite parts of this job. Do you have like a hub, like a primary club of the five that you like drive to and go to every day? Or does it just depend? It really just depends on which club is on fire and Club and mm -hmm. where I need to go most, we are converting into a new app currently, which is what the members use to check in and reserve spots and classes. And we've had a lot of glitches lately with that, just converting from the old to the new. Yeah, so this crazy. week has been Chula Vista full time because, yeah. and National City, because it's just the issues that we're dealing with. We host the classes. We're helping the instructors try to figure out the new systems. Yeah. So. So favorite parts of your job, there's variety. Variety in location and in scheduling. I love the flexibility. I work long days, some days, but then I can take those hours and eliminate them on other days. Or if I've got a doctor's appointment midday or something like that, it's I can usually schedule around. I yeah. do work a lot of hours, but I can move them. So yeah. that is a really cool part of this job as well. Yeah. I think my favorite, absolute favorite part of this job is mentoring new coaches, mm -hmm. training new coaches, seeing the potential in someone and actually getting them to take on their potential and fulfill their, their passions and everything. So, um, I, I think that I've found a way to do that. It's hard in the chaos of the schedules and the HR meetings and we were in a meeting yesterday that was mostly about kids club and I have nothing to do with our kids club department. So there are all of those things that, that are a part of this job. But my favorite part is just being able to evaluate the instructors and then also take them through the process of becoming an amazing instructor. Um, some of those have been members that, you know, you know, their potential, you see it, they're in the front row, they want more. And Sometimes we'll just let them work into a song at a time with me in my classes so that they don't feel like they're just thrown into the deep end and can really just grow in their comfort. Yes. I have seen that you have done that and taken that approach, even with some of like some of the warrior instructors that you have certified. And then you've given them little bites, little sections and had them shadow and take on this section or that section. And then you cut them loose at some point along the way to take on to take over. I, I love that you do that. Are you able to, if you don't mind me asking, are you able to pay them for their like doing a little bit of that? Or is that something that they're sort of like quasi volunteering to do? If they're already on our payroll, mm -hmm. then yes. Mm -hmm. And, and usually it's just that I'm taking time out of my, so I'll put their name on the schedule. They're the teacher. I'm just there supporting. You're the one. Um, not <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I thankfully I'm salary. I don't have to worry about that. Um, you know, like we said, there's probably different versions of this in different. every there's salary and then there's like 
salary that you can, some clubs let you augment your salary with your teaching pay. So you're getting a salary, but then you're getting paid per class. And some, there's just an expectation that teaching is part of the salary. So again, depends on your situation. Um, my exactly. favorite, I agree. Like I, my favorite part of the job was, was bringing on new, mentoring new, bringing on new. And I all, that's one, I had two favorites. That's one. But I also, I loved the schedule. I loved figuring out the damn schedule because it is a jigsaw puzzle. It's so complicated. Every single decision has like a ripple effect times 400. Like every, every single decision you make about one class has an effect, a ripple effect all the way around it on the schedule. And uh, decisions are just... Like sometimes I'm making decisions thinking years in advance. Uh, and, and sometimes I'm making decisions because I, I, I believe in those newbies that I'm bringing on. And it's just, yeah, the, the jigsaw puzzle of the schedule and how to solve problems. Sometimes we have years and months to think about where we're going with the schedule and what the goals are. And then sometimes it is a hair on fire situation where you got to solve a schedule problem right away and you weren't ready to do it. You didn't know the crisis was going to happen and it's there and you've got to make it quickly and you know, it's going to have a ripple effect. And it's just, it's crazy. And then you get that like crowded closet effect, you know, when you make, you know, just, it just, cause we're not omniscient. We can't, we can't know. We can just make our informed best decisions. And so that sometimes things, instructors formats classes they don't always play out the way we hope or want and then and then so you're dealing with it just as it's just a fun um challenging part of the job it's that schedule I love that you put that on your favorites list though because it's difficult that's a it's a it's, yeah it's a, a jigsaw puzzle <laughs> it's you're affecting the people that you care about the most, right? Our instructors and our team, I know it's your livelihood. And so, you know, trying to, to manage the elements of the business and keeping the business happy and manage the members and keeping the members happy. And then the, the instructors, it's a job. Yeah. So let's go there. Uh, Let, let's, a, let's actually go there. So we, we talked about what you enjoy the most and what you like uh, but let's talk about let's let's like talk about the underbelly for people. Uh, we think this is an amazing opportunity, uh, particularly if you have administrative gifting, you're organized, you you have. Um, I think there's a certain skill set that you need to be an effective, good manager and an admin. Um, so I don't think it's for everybody, but it's a great opportunity for those that are cut out for it. So we've talked about that. We're 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 for it. But let's talk about like, let's be real. Let's talk about some of the difficulties uh, with with the job and the role and how hard it is. It, it's a big job, right? I mean, depending on where you're at, but you're still impacting people's day to day. Even just the, the one class makes somebody's whole week and having that responsibility of making sure that that class goes off well and that everything is on point and that they can work their app to get into the club and all of those things come into play. So it, it is a big job. And I, I don't want to sugarcoat that it's been six years and I'm pretty on call 24 seven, right? Now I have fitness managers under me. So they are on call more than I am. And they take the heat of it for sure. But you get a call at 4 a.m. that a 5 a.m. instructor is going to call out and you are thrust into either figuring out what to do with that or teaching it yourself. And then maybe I'm using a very specific example uh, because this just happened. But then you also teach a 7.30 p.m. class and your day doesn't change. Maybe you could find a sub for your class, but then you create inconsistency in a whole different way. So there's always just pieces and juggle, but it, it's a very, it can be a very long day. And that's when I've just found like, okay, where can I take it out of another day so that I can kind of recover and, and rehab and hide, I call it just turtling. Cause I'm just like, I just need 
some time away from people. So, but it, but it can be very taxing and I think creates a lot of burnout in our industry with that. And, and not just speaking from shoes, but just in the fitness industry as a whole, Shoes specifically though does have a no cancellation class policy, which I love. I absolutely love because members plan their whole weeks around our schedules and being able to provide them the class that they signed up for is very important, but that also can be really painful on the management side, trying to make sure that those classes are covered in last minute emergencies. And even, you know, even if you spend hours trying to find someone and you can't, and then you go in and teach it, you may only teach to like two people because they didn't want the format that you changed it to or the the sub that they weren't wanting anyway. So it's, it just can be a difficult stressor for sure. That's interesting that you have a no cancellation policy. I do think that's admirable. I just think that, yeah, that's a huge, huge burden. I, I, we do not have a no cancellation policy, but like it's come hell or high water class gets taught. Like we will go to great lengths, including changing the format or, you know, (laughs) to, um, make sure that the class goes on, but every once in a blue moon, like class actually does get canceled. So I, I, I can imagine that that would be, that would be you, (laughs) you, that would be you showing up and doing it. Oh my goodness. And yes, I also want to validate the 24 seven nature of the job uh, there. It, it is, it's, it's 5am. It's 11pm, sometimes in the same 24 hours. It is Saturdays, it is Sundays, it is holidays, it is when you're on vacation. Um, and, 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 and also, And also I have found through my years and years of group fitness leadership and management that there's seasons where it's like a well-oiled machine, particularly when the employees are just like dialed in, you know, and, um, and when it's a well-oiled machine, sometimes the job it does, it is easier. And then there's seasons where it's riddled with difficulty and trials and tribulations and, um, you know, all that. I think that's a good point to bring up for maybe managers listening or people wanting to go into management. It's, it is seasons and you have to be careful because you have more to say in those seasons a lot than you think, because the more prepared you are, the deeper your bench, we like to say the more instructors you have in the waiting, which is not easy. You know, you can have a sub only instructor ready to go into a class, but then the class opens up and they can't take that one or, you know, there's, there's things that there, if you can get yourself as prepared as possible, I know specifically in the last year, we were doing a little spiral into chaos because we didn't have enough instructors. We were the backups almost all the time. And you get into a phase of, you don't have time to audition. You don't have time to read through applications and make those phone calls and do all the things to bring in new team members because you are so tied to your teaching schedule and getting swamped into that. So I think some of it is beyond our control and it's just going to happen and the firestorms are coming, but there is something you can do. We have really had to crack down this year and say, we love every single one of our instructors, but if, they aren't teaching 85% of their classes, 80% of their classes because they're subbing out all the time and they're not picking up for other people. Like in the past, we have let that go because we really didn't have one to put into those spots. But it also creates more of the chaos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of difficulties and having like talk to, talk to us about having hard conversations. <laughs> conversations they're so hard right um because you basically become friends but there's a line it's like that very fine line between I really really truly care about my team and I have so many common interests and we live at the gym together so we've got all these things in common but then you really do have to also have those management talks and we like to call it here. She's like taking your friendship hat off and putting your manager hat on because those relationships will develop. And, and as much as you try to keep that 
professional boundary, those relationships do develop. And then when you have to pull a class or you've got a member issue and a feedback issue or something that you've got to address, you have to be able to be strong and have those conversations, whether you want to or like to or not. Yeah, I, there's a huge, that's a huge struggle for the job. Uh, I, I just like literally tried to, well, my first management job, it was extra hard because I was an instructor there for so many years. I was already just straight up friends with all the instructors. We were all, the friendship factor was already there. And then I had to put on a boss hat. So that was extra hard. But then as I grew and opportunities came and I, ended up at like the DAC years later, I was just like, don't become friends. <laughs> don't become friends with these people. Nope. And um, of course, like you say, people slip through the cracks. Like people, I literally say that. I'm like, oh, you slipped through the crack. I'm trying not to be friends with my staff um, because I don't want to appear clickish. I mean, there's so many reasons for it, but just like you, I would, I would just, I would say I'm reaching out with my boss hat on. This is my management hat. Uh, and also I, I, I didn't blur those lines. Like I wouldn't say in the same text message, like, don't forget to clock in. Um, or you didn't clock in for your classes this week. Uh, love you. What are you doing Friday night? <laughs> like I, I like they're, they just don't like it's, it's, it's like a, it's like two different per it's like, I'm two different people in their life. And I find ironically that those quote, friends, unquote, those friendships that really respect that and will respond to me with the, uh, for lack of a better word, subordinate uh, role, like they will respond to me like, like a staff member. Um, th those, those friendships are actually much easier to manage. Like they just get it. They, they know they're, they help with the blurred lines being clear. So that's, so for those, yeah. for the, so those of you listening to this episode that might not be interested in becoming managers, that's a little takeaway um, for you as well as it just makes your, your supervisor's uh, relationship with you, their friendship with you, their role with you so much easier. If you are friends, if you can um, just, you know, respect those boundaries, which I'm sure you do. All right. What else with difficulties? I think one of the hardest things for me is that I am pulled out of the classroom a majority of the time. So it's like you get really good at teaching. You get really good at fitness. And then because you're really good, people notice and want to bring you into leadership positions within the club. But then you don't get to do the thing that you're actually really, really good at and that you love and that you got into this for. And so I just encourage anyone listening out there to make sure to carve that space. I probably teach, I think I could say more than most. And I think I could say more than any of our district managers on the team here. And it's because I, I truly make the time tonight. I'm teaching at 730 on a Thursday. It's not a great spot. It's, you know, but, but I made the time and I made it happen. And it's what I love. And it gives you a pulse on the members. It gives you the experience of what your instructors are going through when they get bombarded with questions about the new app or the ticket system or the audio not working. Like if I didn't teach a couple times a week in different places, I don't think I would be as knowledgeable about everything that's going on. No, I think that it is. First of all, that's not my experience in leadership, which is interesting. And I'm glad you brought it up, but I didn't feel a pull uh, to teach less at all. I didn't, but I do agree with you that, I mean, to be an effective leader, you have to be in the trenches. You have to be in the trenches, not just with your um, colleagues and your fellow instructors, but the members and, um, you know, like getting your hands in the stereo cabinet and like all the, just hearing all the feedback and all the everything like it's just I think so important to lead from the from from doing the work too when I send out all these requests to my team I know because I've been there and I know that I'm asking a big ask to make sure that you clean up the studio before you leave or you know because I, I know I've been there I have members that want to talk to me and pull me in a million different directions and I still have to end my classes on time because the next class is going to start and all of those things. So when I, I'm asking things of people, it's because I, I've done it too. And I, I know it's possible, but I also am very understanding of how hard it can be. Yes. 
Okay. So are there any, so other- I think those are, yeah. I think those are the big difficulties. I, I think that the only other one is trying to find time to be healthy yourself. We practice what we preach and it's very difficult to do that, but I try to work out. I actually love working out at home still. I like to be with my dogs whenever I can. And so getting those in and being away from the club for me is kind of my mental health, not just physical health workout and just making time. I think we talked about maybe another podcast down the road, talking more about my health issues because we've just sprinkled oh, those you, in. You didn't really go there today, but you, you do struggle with Crohn's. Yes. So I do think that would be something that we can delve into on another episode. I think that's a great idea because there's so not- make sure like yeah. you're taking care of yourself because yeah, what, are your, what are your tips? Okay. Let's kind of conclude with, so we talked about some of your favorite things about the job, some of the difficulties, some of the underbelly, because we want to keep it real. We want to keep it real with people. What are some tips if you you know, to those who might be interested in, in getting a, an admin job for the first time. So I actually have a top five, but oh, I, I, <laughs> with the health aspect though, just make sure you're taking your time. I told my FM today, he's working all night at a different job because we pieced together so many grind, you know, around here. So I was like, make sure you're getting sleep. This is not worth killing you for, you know, like, and Honestly, our break rooms are full of junk food. I don't know if that's the case for you. Um, yes. Yes. Sorry. I don't want to interrupt you, but yes, I just think to your point about being healthy. I think I see it in churches, like church lobbies, like they're serving junk food, like cookies and muffins. It's like, wait, we care about people being spiritually healthy, but why are we feeding them garbage? Like talk cancer causing garbage in the lobby or like, in the medical field, like nurses, doctors, a lot often are like not healthy. And it's not, it's same thing in our industry too. You can be a, in group fitness and not be taking care of your very own health. As ironic as that sounds like, um, and, and I'm not above it. I'm not above it. Like it's a struggle for me to take care of my health as well. And, um, you know, I have great posture in the classroom, but not when I'm at home working on my computer, like, it's a, it's, it's, this is a great point. And, and it's interesting that you took it there, but that we as health professionals need to be prioritizing our own health. <laughs> I want to be the example in every way, shape and form, right? In my movement, in my cueing, in my leadership, and then also in how I take care of myself. And I know we're all type A personalities. That's why we take on these kind of jobs. And so slowing down, my husband will actually text me and be like, did you eat today? And so it's so sweet, but those kind of reminders to just make sure you eat just, you know, and, and going back to our break rooms, I think it's because all of our front desk staff, you know, they're like high school, baby college. So they can still eat all those things and not have issues, but, um, you know, it's hard when you're running from club to club or, or you have meeting to meeting to meeting. And then you're like, I, I, it's three o'clock. I haven't eaten anything yet. And then what do you have to get, you know, you've got fast food or, or things around. So just really taking that time to prepare and, and prioritize yourself. Yeah, that's great. Okay. But that was, okay. was that one of your tips? No, that was, you were just, fit- that was not a tip, but you I were finishing your thought. Sorry. I thought you were going into tips. Okay. So what are your tips for people that might be aspiring? Okay. So I was trying to think of like a top five. And I think the top five, if you are not in management yet, you are a fitness instructor and you are looking for more, would be expand your education and your certification. Ooh, All yeah. of my newer instructors, I'm like, if you want to start, that's how you start. Because the more you know, the more formats you're comfortable with, the better you can lead, the better you'll be able to evaluate and hire and audition and all of those things. So yeah. Get comfortable. That's great. Uh, yes. That's something you can do early, right? right? You, I have no to add to that. that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess I will add to it. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to work. I wouldn't have. It would be harder, hard for me to respect someone that I felt like 
didn't have their fair share of credentials and couldn't jump in and teach a bunch of formats and couldn't interview well for a name the format um, because they don't know how to do it themselves. Like, so I think, yes, for so many. And I think there's no way to be an expert in every single genre, right? I used to dance growing up, but I am not a Zumba instructor and I don't claim to be, I can do it in a pinch. Yeah. Uh, I don't prefer to. I am not the yoga expert in our district. I have two very amazing 500 hour yogi certification um, fitness managers. So I defer to them in that realm because I know they can give better feedback and, and growth and opportunities to my instructors. And then I might be more specialized in other areas. So, um, but as much knowledge as you can get, even if you're not super deep into that format, you can find things like from the trainings that you can give to your instructors to help them grow. Mm -hmm. So tip two is develop strong leadership skills. I wasn't ready for that. I, as soon as I got the offer, I was like, okay, I said, yes, now let's figure out <laughs> how to lead. And so just doing podcasts or trainings or things to help try to develop your leadership skills because you lead in the classroom, but that's a little bit different than leading a huge team of instructors. It's totally different. It's, it's a different skill set. Yeah, it is totally different. Yeah. Number three is find a great mentor because even just if you want to take it to fitness, when you get your certification, right? I got my ACE personal trainer and I was like, okay, but now what? Like, I have no idea how to actually work with a client. And so <laughs> same thing for fitness management, right? Like find somebody to, to somebody yeah. like us. Dude, when I finished my 200 hour yoga, I, no joke. I was like, wait, so how do I put together a class? <laughs> like, yeah, so you're right. Exactly. There is, yes. exactly. Yes. So yes. find a mentor. Back in Athens, you know, I read my book. I actually, I got it during a break of my master's program for the holidays. And I thought I was going to just like crush it in two weeks that I was off of school. And quickly realized there's way more science in the personal training cert than there is in the group fitness cert. And so I did not crush it in two weeks. It took me like six months. <laughs> um, but I found a mentor there in Georgia and I was like, can I shadow you? Can I just follow you around for a week with your clients and see what you do and how you interact? And so do that with a manager too. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was three, four network. Network, network, network. Um, there's, I forget who the quote is from, but it's your network is your net worth. Ooh, um, and I love that's good. Yes. Oh my yes, God. Say it again. Your network is your net worth. Oh. I'll have to give credit in the in the show notes because I don't remember where that quote can, was from. We can ask Google, but it's similar to Jim Rohn and your your circle of five, your influences and like Yes. Yes, it's so important. And especially for me, every time I had to move with my husband, it was a change, a change of, of I lost all of my contacts. I lost all of my clients. I, you know, had to restart, but I didn't have to restart from zero because I had all these connections. My master trainer in Pittsburgh was the one that connected me to the master trainer here in San Diego. And then also to you because she's, uh, was good friends with you in the past. So that was kind of how I knew a warrior and all of that too. So the fitness world is small. It's smaller than you think. So get to know those people, build great relationships, don't burn bridges, mm -hmm. all those things. Oh my God, that's great. Was that your five? Um, that was number four. And then number five is be your manager's go-to instructor. So by that, I mean, follow and enforce the rules. When we ask you to do announcements, please, 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 please do the announcements, clean the room, sub as much as you possibly can. And I promise your manager is taking note of that. We notice who our people are and who we can just always depend on. And that if we have an opportunity that grows within our company, you are the first person I'm putting in line for that. 
I like, I literally got goosebumps, which is very nerdy of me because it's not like it's that deep what we're talking about, but it is, I literally did get goosebumps. It is so true. Like just be, if you want to be a manager, be the best employee, not instructor, employee, because there's a difference. Like sometimes I have I, um, great instructors, very talented, five stars, A plus, rock star. That doesn't mean that they are a good employee. They're different. That's a different thing. And so you want to be both. <laughs> you want to be both. You're clocking in on time. Basically, you want to fly under the radar. You want to shadow. You want to show up. You want to be helpful. So you're no, you're, you, they take note of you. But also, like, it's such a gift to your manager if, if you're not the one. Like, they don't hear from you because you just put your head down, do your job. You're dependable. You show up. You get it done. And I mean, those instructors that I, that I never heard from, I don't mean that in a bad way. They were just like such a joy. So easy, so easy to yes. work. I saw one yesterday that I hadn't seen in a long time and, and she's been with us for I think 11 or 12 years now. It's incredible. Like that's from basically she's just opening and she, it's, it's that exactly. It's that, you know, I don't hear from her or see her nearly enough. And yet I know she's always got it she's, she's doing the things she's, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So will you do me a favor and quickly just read the bullets of your five things one more time, just as a way to recap those five points that you prepared? Cause those were excellent. Yeah. So expand your education and certifications, develop strong leadership skills outside of the classroom. We know you have the classroom stuff down, but all the team stuff, find a mentor, ask to shadow, Network, network, network. That is your net worth. And then be your manager's go-to instructor. Boom. Those are awesome tips. Those are so good. So, and you don't have to be great to start. Like you don't have to have all the great skill sets as long as you're willing to, to learn. And, you know, I didn't know, I had never been a manager before being a manager and I, I did kind of learn on the job, um, but I was willing to learn and I wanted to learn. So uh, it do, don't think if you're listening to this, that you're disqualified if you have not had management experience in the past. Kind of like, you know, kind of like our front row people are turn in to be the best instructors we have. The best employees and the best instructors make the best managers, really, I find so. And you learn, you know, just like you didn't know how to teach, but you were front row, you loved it in the front row, and then you learned how to teach. It's similar on on more of a macro with administration. You you are a great employee. It is often the next step in your career is to be a great manager. And again, like we talked about in the beginning, it's a it's a great supplemental way. It's a great way to bolster and make a living in fitness and and then and then maybe you aren't looking to make a living in fitness because there are group fitness management jobs that are 10 hours a week 25 hours a week that's so true. you're not all 45 i mean 40 which feels like 60 sorry <laughs> <laughs> it may um, round up occasionally but sometimes we round up but you know what it's the seasons and sometimes it feels like less okay so you had a confession or two. Did you decide on one? I think the one that applies most to what okay. we were just talking about. I I still think I'm learning. And I appreciate my team so much for letting me learn and grow with them. I, I would not ever claim that I have this job down. There are always going to be tasks that don't get done and that, you know, you're just always processing and constantly learning from and developing from. I think the biggest thing I could leave everybody with just on a closing note of my tips is like, come with it from your heart, care about your team, care about your job, care about the members that you serve. And you know, that is going, whether you make mistakes or, or you're learning as you go, you're, they know you care. And I think that's hopefully what my team would say about me, but okay. Confession. So the one that applies the most to, I think what we've just been talking about is that you don't have to be perfect. And with that, I was fired from one of my first gym jobs. <laughs> no way. And I, I mean, I don't think I, I don't, I just want people to know that it happens. 
it's it's not you all the time and that you don't have to be perfect. I told choose that when I got hired, it was <laughs> on my resume and I owned it. So um, it was a very weird situation at a very weird club in Pennsylvania. I was told that I was too in it for myself, that I was too selfish. And I was like, okay, I'd like to take that feedback and learn and grow. And um, they basically, their business model was that they did not want members to come in to the club because they make more and don't have as much wear and tear on the gym if if they operate that way. And so me promoting my classes and trying to actually fill my classes. Oh, it was a conflict of interest, basically. <laughs> my downfall. Oh, so well, that was not the club for you. No. And so that's, I guess, my confession is just, you know, obviously that is not a proud moment, no matter what the reason, yeah. but also just know that you have to find your people and yeah. obviously, you know, find a place that supports you and your growth <laughs> and your classes. But it did make for an amazing confession. So I'm grateful to that club for that. Like you got to say you got fired before. <laughs> I, and I'm a manager in a district now, so I don't know. It worked. It worked out. It worked out. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in again. Oh, Mariah, where can everybody find you, follow you? Give us the lowdown. And of course, we'll put all your links in our show notes, too. Yes, I am mostly on Instagram. I live on Instagram and it is just my name, which is a long name that I married into, but Mariah Lamatina. So find it in the show notes <laughs> on Instagram. I'm on Facebook too, but mostly just family pictures and things like that there. I am on LinkedIn, Mariah Lamatina there. And I'm sure you'll follow me by following all the good warrior stuff because I'm always commenting and, and tagging in there. So, and she's going to be in like all my reels in the last week because of LA and the idea world convention, I should say actually, because this, brought this episode will probably broadcast in a couple of weeks. So we have to scroll back, but anyway, you can find her there. And Mariah, thank you again so much uh, for giving your perspective, your story, your leadership, your advice, your counsel, and being dishing it out to us in a real authentic way. I would be nothing without my team. So I'm just so thankful to have the opportunity to guide them and hopefully take them on the right journey too. And I just want to give a shout out to Choose Fitness because this is a pretty <laughs> amazing company that you work for. Just me observing peripherally uh, and, you know, they've opened up their studios for us. I, I think it was actually in LA or Anaheim at an idea for some team building stuff and um, what a, what a beautiful, what a beautiful company. So yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks Thank for listening. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining in on the confessions of a group X instructor podcast. If you're interested in becoming a warrior instructor, go to warriorinstructors.com. But if you want more and found this episode amazing, please give us a rating. And with a simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. So remember, be brave, be bold, be blessed. And above all, listen, learn, love.